Would you like to pick a question? <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, my beautiful, delightful internet friends. I'm very excited to have a real-life friend with me today. This is Annika the Amputee. You can find her on YouTube and Instagram. So as you can probably tell from this video, we are both right below knee amputees. And I'll be honest, before I was an amputee, I sort of didn't think about amputees' life all that much. And I kind of assumed that people's experiences were at least somewhat similar if they both had uh, elective below knee amputation surgeries on the same side and are the same age but I don't think that's actually accurate from conversations I've had. So today, we're gonna to be going through some commonly asked questions of leg amputees and seeing if our answers are identical, super different, see if we agree, disagree. I even made a cool bowl of actual questions to make it look trendy and neat for YouTube. <laughs> She's like, I wanna be involved. You can be oh, involved. And now Sadie's jealous. All right, I'm gonna pick a bad one. I already do, do it, please do. <laughs> Is there anything you can't do as an amputee. That's a good question. It is. So yeah. I, I, if you watch my YouTube, if you see my Instagram, I am very active. I do a ton of sports. I compete in track, field, shooting, swimming, archery, snowboarding. I also do gymnastics. I also surf. I also rock climb. Like I do pretty much anything I want to do. I will say I did get really sad one time when I realized I can't do ballet anymore. Oh yeah. Because right. I did ballet yeah. my entire life and. Without ankle flexion, it's really hard to do something as simple as a plie. Oh, and roller coasters. I don't know if you know this. Oh, I've wondered about roller coasters actually. They actually have a specific rule that says as an amputee, you cannot ride. I'd probably say about 90% of rides. No you can look way. to see which ones, but it's because there's some rides that you have to be strapped in at the ankle, so they're liable if their leg falls off, but you could think like, oh, I'm an amputee, I can just take my leg off. But if you have to strap at the ankles, then you have one leg hanging, and oh, right. it's just a whole thing. And it's a lot of ignorance and a lot of people, like I do know amputees who want to rest their chances, wear long pants, and they're like- I was like, is that gonna yeah. wear There's no way this is coming oh, off. Yeah. Like with skinny jeans on oh, and yeah. the sleeve. You absolutely but... could, but also in the case that your leg flies off in the middle of the ride, you're without a leg and they're not liable. And maybe I killed someone with it, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I always feel like everyone's like, there's nothing that you can't do with a disability. Oh God, you just farted. <laughs> it so smells so bad. Did you hear her part too? No, but no, I just, it just, no, it's just it's <laughs> I invite you over to my house, my dogs are farting on you. There's dog hair everywhere. Oh my god. And she's just, she's like, what are you looking what? at me for? Um, so after that uh, horrendous gas attack from my dog, <laughs> yeah, so I always feel like people are like, there's nothing that you can't do with a disability or whatever, and the reality is that there, there are some things that you actually can't do. One thing, the only thing that I discovered, is mixed martial arts fighting. Like full contact, like, like, UFC, like, I used to do that. I did that for two years. I did MMA fighting, and you can't kick people in the head with a carbon fiber, you know, well engineered carbon fiber. It's super lame, because I love it. I love that stuff. So I could still, like, train with bags or whatever, but I couldn't actually kick people in the head for recreational purposes anymore. Yeah. You are so in the way. <clears throat> Do you but think you could lay I will down? say, if you ever got in a real fight, like, yeah. that's the oh, first thing coming off and getting beat with it. Sophie, do you want to pick the next one? Ooh, how long after your amputation did it take to get active again? I'll start this one off since I pulled the question. It took me a lot longer than I expected to. It was a pretty, pretty... Bye. <laughs> audio quality is just trash from the dogs in this. Uh, it was a pretty long recovery for me. I think I started sort of like being able to kind of get up and around and do normal things at like six to eight weeks. I could like go, you know, see a movie when we were allowed out in public or um, things like that. But I didn't get active, active again probably until four months after my revision. So it took me a while to like start walking and then maybe like two months more to start hiking and then like another month to start doing things like a ninja gym or experimenting around. How about you? I was in the military when I lost my leg and they don't really care about your feelings or <laughs> what you can and can't do. That's nice. You're, you're uh, just gonna go like field day. It's a very in-depth cleaning that you do once a week and they like oh, come yeah. around with the white gloves to check your room. I was still doing that um, the week after my amputation. Wait, seriously? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I mean, you make it work. I actually, it was six or seven weeks post-amputation, I did my first competition and it was an international competition. Such a badass. I'm so lame in comparison. <laughs> no, no, I just, I have, I have resources being in yeah, the military, which yeah. is cool, but I did most of my stuff still seated. Um, I did wheelchair track. I did wheelchair rugby. 
swimming and archery that competition. Yeah. I actually went dancing. I do West Coast Swing. Yes, that's right. I went dancing before I could even walk without a cane. Wasn't the best idea I did. So our recovery times on that vary <laughs> quite significantly. Yeah, I think I just think it's interesting. Like everyone recovers differently and has different complications or lack thereof. And yep. uh, that's awesome. Yeah. I was very lucky to not have complication. I remember watching yours and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> poor Joe. <laughs> I'll get there one day. I remember watching a video, I think it was four months after my amputation, maybe it was four months after yours because ours were around similar times, mm -hmm. of you doing like a backflip on a trampoline oh, yeah. and being like so happy for you and then also so sad because oh. I was like, I'm, I'm like awaiting another surgery and I yeah. can't do anything. It was like one day but it felt so far away. Yeah. So it was very inspirational for me. Like it was very like a goal setting, of like I am going to get back to doing things. Yes. Mm -hmm. What in your life is easier slash harder because of amputation? That's a loaded question. Right? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's basically a what's different about your life. Yeah. Being at the airport, so I, I tend to travel in my wheelchair just because airports are big and yeah. um, I just never know like the place I'm going. I just like to have my wheelchair with me. So being in a wheelchair, you get to uh, board the plane first. So yeah, seriously. you don't have to worry about like the Southwest, like exactly 24 <laughs> hours before I'm gonna be there. Check in real quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's little things like that that I'd say are easier. Handicap parking is always a nice benefit, especially like busy places. But yeah, I'd say probably the hardest things are just stairs and ramps and then days that, so when I take off my leg for the day, I have a wheelchair friendly um, apartment. Yeah. So I take off my leg for the day. I can do whatever I want. But then when people are like, let's go out and do things, I'm like, but I already took my leg off. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like just having the motivation to do things at the end of the day, because I just get tired. Yeah. And I'm like, I already washed my leg. I don't want to wash it again. Yeah. And I think the uh, the airport thing is definitely one that comes to mind for me too, because mm -hmm. going through airports, like it takes a while because I'm not super fast anymore. Um, but like getting through security is great. Getting on the plane, um, being able to like get situated, get my leg off before people sit down if I feel like it like that's that's really nice I mean there's like a variety of things that are that are harder but the only thing that ever really comes to mind is like just the basic daily tasks like if I want to like if I'm upstairs working mm -hmm. and I want a glass of water and I'm taking my leg off because it's uncomfortable I have to like suit up mm -hmm. and then like get down the stairs to get a glass of water then get back up so it's like those little like yeah. little things and most of it you just adjust to though I think yeah. How do you feel about the word disabled? I always feel like this is a loaded question because people have lots of different <coughs> thoughts and feelings on it. I don't have a problem with the word. I think I think people think that it's like a dirty word or a, not a slur, but like a bad thing to call someone. It's to me, it's not at all. It's just descriptive of like, there are certain abilities that are different for me. Um, there are other words like handicap that have different implications. Like handicap, the definition of it implies that like success is more difficult or something like that. I'm like, I don't agree with that. <laughs> But uh, being disabled, meaning that some abilities are different or restricted, is 100% accurate and is not a bad thing to call someone in my mind. What do you think about that word? So I was in the Marine Corps. Yes, oh yes. <laughs> uh, so I guarantee you the things I call myself would be offensive to yes. most people. <laughs> I'm like, the word disabled to me is just like, it just comes with the territory. Like I, yeah. even handicap, I know like you're not a fan of the word, but I have handicap parking. Yeah, just yeah I say that too. Yeah, very much. <clears throat> I've never cared about the word disabled. I honestly kind of think it's annoying when people like try to like change and be like, oh, you're differently able or, that one. <laughs> or stuff like that. I'm just like, just call it as it is. Like yeah. you're the people that are offended or people it doesn't even affect. Yeah. It seems like yeah. they're like, they're like, well, my cousin, and I'm like, cool, well, I'm the one that has the amputation, so if yeah. you want to acknowledge it, I don't care. Differently abled is one that really frustrates me because it seems like, it like wants to sugarcoat it or make it seem like being disabled is like bad. And it's like, no, I'm not differently abled, I'm missing a leg, which means things are gonna be different. Mm -hmm. Like, it is a disability, but that's not like a bad thing to say. Okay. What is the weirdest part about being an amputee? I don't know if it's the weirdest part, but one of the things that just comes up a lot is as an amputee, everyone thinks you know every amputee that's ever existed. Oh my gosh, that's so accurate. They're like, oh, my uncle has a friend who's an amputee. I'm like, cool. You know Bob, right? <laughs> <laughs> Assuming that I, I know everybody who's an amputee, that's probably the weirdest thing for me. Well, of course you know all the people missing limbs. I'm like, I, I don't. You may notice since our last shot, some of the scenery has changed. One of my dogs leaked on the couch, so now we get 
Nicholas staring deep into your eyes. Okay, so for me, I think one of the weirdest things about being an amputee is how weird my leg always smells. Like it gets, uh, does your leg smell like horrible when you take it off? No. When I sweat, it smells real bad. Maybe there's something wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I discover I have a like problem. Like your prosthetic or your liner? My liner. Okay. Oh, like yeah, if you're a liner. liner. I'm yeah. like, oh no, my leg doesn't smell weird, but it's like liner. the liner. I get so sweaty mm. and it like drips yeah, sweat inside your that. liner. Yeah. So that's, that's an odd part. All right. What do you wish people knew about amputees that they don't? I think a lot of people, and maybe I had this assumption too, a lot of people assume that like being an amputee is a significant part of my identity. It's really not. It's just something that's a part of my life. And I obviously have a YouTube channel about it, so I talk about all those issues, but in daily life, aside from me adjusting to things, like being an amputee doesn't come up that much. Um, and I think a lot of people think it's like 70% of someone's identity if they're dealing with some kind of disability, when in fact that's really not the case. I'm actually the opposite. Yeah, okay, cool. I, I think being an amputee is a big part of who I am, yeah. and how I present myself. Like I love showing off my leg, I love talking to people about it. I think it's the biggest thing, uh, Hunter Woodall actually just did a TikTok oh, yeah. about this, about how kids like stare at you and whenever you're just out in public. Yes. And I'm like, honestly, the worst part is the parents. Yes. I think the thing that I want most people to know about amputees is, well, this is the consensus I've come to. If somebody's out and about showing off their leg, yeah. they're okay with you coming up and asking about it. They don't necessarily want to talk about their story, right? but if they ask like, how does that work? Especially kids, like how, how are you walking on that? Like I'm fine with that or even how, how does this connect to your leg? Yeah. If somebody's wearing long pants and you like see a sliver of a prosthetic ankle, they probably don't want to talk about it. Yeah. So I'd say as an amputee, and I, I can't speak for everybody, I'd prefer people to come up and actually talk to me and have a conversation with me like a normal person about being an amputee rather than staring and like, shunning your kids from even looking because yeah. it's such a bad thing to be disabled in public. Yeah, I think that's a really important one because when you do that, and I've seen parents do that all the time, mm -hmm. or like a kid will say something and be like, shh, don't, 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 don't ask questions. But you do that and you create this aura of uh, amputees are weird or scary because we can't ask questions and like, you know, it's the other. And so, yeah, I totally agree. I think that's so important. Also found it helpful to like ask, so like if I'm not talking to another, even if I am talking to another amputee being like, can I ask you a question? Instead yeah. of just being like, hey, what's that? Or whatever, yeah. kids are different, but like adults, yeah. But that's interesting, yeah, because if you're wearing shorts and you're showing it, chances are you might be more comfortable. Maybe not, can't speak for everyone. But yeah, no, it's just a good, out. It's a good gauge. Yeah, I like that. How often do you see a prosthetist? <laughs> well, we were actually kind of talking about this a little bit ago. Because I am retired military, I have the option to see my prosthetist as much as I want. There was a time when I was literally going to see a prosthetist every single day to make minor adjustments, especially yeah. at the beginning. Oh yeah, for sure. At the beginning, you see a prosthetist a lot. Um, but even now, I, I'm i very fortunate because I literally go into Joann's, find new fabric, and I'm like, I want a leg with this fabric on it. This would look pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I, I found another fabric that I like that I want different feet attachments for, so I just yeah. walked into my process and I'm like, I want this. That's so and crazy. So for me, that's an option. I know for people that are not military have a much different. Yeah. Honestly, sometimes I just go and hang out with them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. I really just go if there's a problem I'm having, like fits bad or I want a new foot. And so just getting readjustments on that. I don't know, once every couple months. I think um, I haven't, yeah, I don't, I don't see my prosthetist anymore unless I'm like up there and just drop by and say, hey, yeah. or unless something's wrong. I probably haven't had to have it adjusted in like three or four months, but right at the beginning, it was like, it was, it's a hike for me. It's about a 60 minute drive to see my prosthetist, but I'd still go up there at least once a week to get, you know, the next step or get this adjusted or fitted or my leg had shrunk so much that I needed to have a whole new socket again. Um, yeah, so I think that that varies, but it tends to even out for most people that like, you don't have to see them every week anymore at a certain point. What is the strangest reaction someone has had to you being an amputee? One, when I first got my leg off, I was in a shrinker sock, I was on crutches. I was, oh, yeah. I was just at a commissary and this kid like yells like, from probably like down the aisle, be like, mom, look, she broke her leg off. Oh my God, I had a kid do the same thing. I thought it was the cutest thing. Like, oh my God, yes. I broke it off. <laughs> but my other favorite one, this happened recently, I was running and my running blade is very skinny. It doesn't look like a normal leg. Yeah. And there was this little girl and I'm in Colorado at this point and she's on a walk with her mom and she goes, mom, look, she's wearing skis. 
Oh my gosh! <laughs> like she, she, I was like, and her mom's like, yeah, it's skis. Like she didn't even bother oh, to explain adorable. it. To her. But she was so excited that this girl was out here like skiing on this trail <laughs> in the middle of summer. I've been lucky enough not to have any like mean reactions in public. Like no one's ever been like openly aggressive or hostile or insulting towards me. Mm -hmm. Online's a different story, but people <laughs> online are just not super nice all the time. Mm -hmm. Most of you are absolutely delightful and I appreciate you being here. Except you, Jim. Yeah, Jim. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to anyone named Jim. Um, all Jim in the comments and be like, how like, dare what? they? We're done. <laughs> what is the best thing? Best B-E-S-T capitalized. Yes, best. About being an amputee. I've had so many opportunities I would have yeah. never. So like, like I've said a million times, I retired from the Marine Corps at 23 years old. Yeah. Who retires from the Marine Corps? Who retires from anything at 23? Yeah, yeah seriously. So just things like that, just the trips I've gone on, the people that I've met and filming a YouTube video with Footless Joe right now. <laughs> You Which feels so special. She's so cool, guys. <laughs> the events I go to, the sports that I do. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is opportunities that I've had. For me, it's probably the conversations that I've been able to have and like the people I've been able to meet and the platform that I have that I, I sincerely doubt I, would, I wouldn't have anything similar to this had all of this not happened. Super, super grateful for that. It, it's also always a conversation starter. I, I like having conversations with people. I like having even real conversations with people. And I feel like it's a gateway um, to kind of break the ice with people where you might not have been able to either. But yeah, opportunities are definitely yes. huge. Ooh, uh, this is when I'm pretty sure we're different on. What is phantom pain like for you? You go first. Oh, that's right, I was weird. I made up the rule, but I can't remember them. <laughs> so I do have phantom pain. I've had phantom pain since Pretty much, I don't know, it was probably a week or two after my amputation. I was like, oh, that's what's going on. Um, when the amputation like cast came off, it got really bad. It was like horrible for seven weeks. It felt like the bottom of my foot that no longer existed was constantly getting stabbed with a cattle prod. Like days sucked. Um, and there was no really medication that could help that because normal pain medications don't really touch phantom pain because it's nerve pain, it's pretty specific. There are some, but they didn't work well for me. But eventually through like mirror therapy and through like, you know, massage and all kinds of things, I was able to kind of get it under control where I still have phantom pain every day. Sometimes my ankle will really ache. Sometimes it'll feel like someone's like cutting the side of it. I had a weird phase where I felt like someone was paper cutting in between my toes, which was awful. Uh, but mo most commonly I'll just get like electrical shocks where it's really painful for like three seconds and then I'm fine. I don't have phantom limb pain. Yes. It's pretty great. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> So when I first had my leg amputated, everyone warns me about phantom limb pain. So it's like, oh, I have phantom limb pain. And the more I talk to people, the more I realized I have residual limb pain. Right. All my pain is localized in my residual limb. Yeah. Um, I had targeted muscle re during my initial amputation. I don't know if, oh, yeah. if that's why it was so successful for me. Like, don't get me wrong. I was in a ton of pain for about eight to nine weeks. Yeah. But literally overnight it dropped off. Like I woke up the next morning and I'm like, oh, it's gone. Oh, that's crazy. That's uh, so cool. Feel very grateful that I don't have phantom limb pain. Yeah. Cause I hear how bad it is and I'm one of the lucky ones, I guess. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. I was talking to um, Josh Nolan is uh, someone else who I interviewed on this channel a while ago. And um, he's a, a baloney amputee, survivor of the Aurora theater shooting. And I asked him about phantom pain. He was like, I never had any. I'm like, that's amazing and I talked to some people who are like I can barely live with it and so mm -hmm. there seems to be this huge spectrum of you don't know how your body's gonna react like yeah. everyone's different and yeah. so sometimes you have it sometimes it goes away sometimes it gets real bad and it's uh it's just a roll of the dice your turn my dear do you have any fears about growing older as an amputee my biggest fear as an amputee which is something that you will not have to worry about because you've talked about it is being pregnant as an amputee For sure it is a very big fear of mine because I mean, I've never been pregnant, but I know people who do get pregnant and typically your ankles swell, your legs swell, things yeah. swell. With a set socket, there's not a lot of room for, for swelling. And you don't hear about a lot of pregnant amputees because yeah. just as a majority, there's more male amputees yes. that never have to worry about it. Dealing with pregnancy as an amputee terrifies me. I do know two women now who did were pregnant as oh, an amputee. Cool. Yeah. So it was nice to see that it is possible and prosthetists will work with you and there's options. But that's really the only fear I has an have as an amputee. I'm not worried yeah. about getting old. I mean, my body's already breaking down. What's the worst that's gonna happen? Like I'm gonna I die already, eventually. I already <laughs> get up and groan, like it's okay. Yes. I, I realize that like whenever I'm getting out of the car lately, I'm always like, Ugh. 
I'm like, I need to stop making those noises. <laughs> like, yeah, I think that's, I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. And on like, we, I've talked about this in videos before, but like, we don't, we don't want kids. At least at this point, neither Brian and I have, have a desire, especially to have biological kids. But you know, things happen. And if that ever did happen, that would terrify me. I, yeah, I think, I mean, people obviously do it and it's incredible, but there, there are a lot of complications and like your center of balance totally changes oh, yeah. and it's just, it's just it's different. I do have this like lingering fear that I'll eventually have to have like an above knee amputation because something will go wrong, you know, because of pressure on it or whatever. But I think that's more an illogical fear than anything. All right. It's yours. Oh, I am so <laughs> bad at this. <laughs> I like that you can keep track. I'm like, it's your turn again. <laughs> it's okay. I'll read all of them. <laughs> How many legs do you have? What does your closet of legs look like, Annika? <laughs> I'll send you a picture. Yes. Uh, wait, you're going first. You keep doing oh this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm there to games. What is the question? How many uh, legs do you have? How many legs do I have? I, I now have three, uh, but I have two that are put together. We'll save the third one for an upcoming video. Um, but yeah, I have a biking leg, and then I have this leg that I use for literally everything else. So I have one <laughs> yeah. right here. I have a lot of legs. Yeah. This is my, this is what I call my gymnastics leg. It has the Flower All Pro on it. This is my favorite walking foot. I can do back flush, back handsprings, fun things with it's this so leg. Cool. Um, I have two running blades, one for road running and one for track running. Oh, cool. I have, okay, I should probably count. Yeah. I have another socket with something called a coupling system on it, which is, I wish I brought it so I could show, but it like, it, there's like a pin that you can unattach. So you keep the socket on, but you can trade out feet because I have so many feet, so it's just super useful. Awesome. But with that one, I have one standard foot. I have a beach foot, which we just took a, oh, yeah. normal, like a normal foot and just took off the foot shell, put tread on it, so you don't have to worry about That's water. Awesome. I have my snowboarding foot, rock climbing foot. Oh yeah. Oh, and a heel foot. I have a foot that I can wear adjustable heels in. Yes. I was actually wearing heels last night, I look cute. <laughs> um, as for sockets, which is, this part, the part that goes over my leg, I only have two. I'm getting a third one made. That's pretty. I guess I have seven or eight feet. Cool. I feel like that number obviously varies for everyone too, but, but most people, most people, most amputees that I know have at least a couple because uh, one foot doesn't work for everything. Like you were saying, like she has one for heels. I can't wear heels in this because it doesn't adjust, but there are other foots that allow you to do that. Um, I can go hiking on like pretty intense trails with this because it has a lot of mobility and it's, it's awesome. Some feet are really just for like road walking and you know, flat, flat, short distances. There's huge variety in the types of feet you can purchase, which is a weird sentence to say. Yes. Purchasing feet. I was like telling somebody about um, all the feet I have and they're like, well, this is lame. I only have two. I know. Like, Loser. <laughs> you weird two footer. She's like an eight footer. I'm like a four, one, two, three, five footer. <laughs> How has amputation affected your friendships or relationships? When I first had my amputation, I was dating a guy and he had a really hard time with adjusting to it. Yeah. Because my way of coping is making jokes. Yes. And even to this day, I often, if I'm not wearing my leg, will wave at people with my stump. It's cute. It's fun. Like, <laughs> you do weird people out, it's great. Yeah, but I just thought it was fun. So that really affected us. We eventually got over it, but then we ended up breaking up, whatever. Yeah. But friendships, it doesn't really affect yeah. because, like, even though it is a big part of my personality, yeah. it doesn't affect me except for the fact that a lot of my friends can get uncomfortable with the staring. Because when you're out in oh, public, sure. it's just inevitable they're going to stare at you, yeah. which in turn, whoever you're with, they're going to stare at as well. So as long as they get over that, at some point you just block it out. You just don't notice yeah. anymore. That's very true. You uh, get to a place where you're just doing your thing and you yeah. know, whatever. My newest relationship is also a amputee. Yeah. He is an above knee amputee. And so we get extra stares. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> it's a good time. Initially, it, it really affected it yeah. because just people aren't used to it. But once people actually get to know you, it doesn't doesn't really do anything. Yeah. For the most part, it, uh, going through this hasn't had a significant effect on my friendships for sure. It's had an impact on my relationship only in that we've like had to go through all of this together. And I think both Brian and I have really grown. I'm really, I'm so grateful that he's gone through all of this with me and been an absolute rock star. But I think I, I had one friend 
who after I announced that I was having an amputation, we were pretty good friends. She never, she's never spoken a word to me again. Really? And I, I still don't know why. It was, yeah, it was very, very bizarre. She just completely disappeared out of my life. So I don't know if she was really uncomfortable with that or just uncomfortable with someone going through something like that or mm -hmm. had a bad experience with amputees. I don't, I, I will never know. Bad experience I've had. I've had a, a number of friends tell me that like, I always have to remind myself that you're an amputee because I just see you as Joe. Like you just get to know your friends as friends. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that some relationships, it's been, it's, it's uncomfortable for me to articulate my limitations sometimes. Like that's something I'm still working on. Being like, that's awesome. I love that you guys are doing that. I'm not gonna be able to do that because I'm not at that point in my recovery yet or because my leg is gonna you know, give out or whatever. And generally people are absolutely incredible in thinking ahead. And I don't blame them if they don't. Like if someone's like, live your life, right? Um, but sometimes having to be like, here are my limits can get uncomfortable in relationships, but it doesn't usually make them uncomfortable. It's just something I have to get over, so. Yeah. Somebody asked me to go running with them recently and I'm like, like I can, but you have to understand that I'm going to have to stop and drain yeah. the sweat out of my leg every like month. Yeah, so <laughs> exactly. It's just how it works. So even being able to do normal activities, you just do them a little bit differently than yep. other people do. So there we have it, the similarities and differences between two baloney Amputees. Elective. On, that's right. Amputees. Yeah, on the right side as well. We're, we're, we're twinning. Also, we agree that purple is a favorite color, yes. and I feel like that's a very important aspect to all of this. <laughs> so thank you for listening. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Were you surprised at any of our answers? Did they make perfect sense to you? Do you disagree if you're an amputee? I would love to hear from you. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for listening. Make sure that you check out Annika on her Instagram. I'm gonna pop it up on screen right here. She's absolutely fantastic. Posts really cool videos and also super adorable. I mean, so it's a, it's a win, win, win all around. But thank you for watching. I love you guys. I'm thinking of you and we will see you in the next video. Bye guys.